My final guest is the last reminder of the golden era of Hollywood. She's been a star for more than 60 years. Her very first film defined her style, began one of the great Hollywood romances, and introduced the world to an actress who became an icon of a time when real men looked like Humphrey Bogart and women could whistle. It's even better when you help. Uh, sure you won't change your mind about this? Uh-huh. This belongs to me and so do my lips. I don't see any difference. Oh, I do. Okay. You know you don't have to act with me, Steve. You don't have to say anything and you don't have to do anything. Not a thing. Oh, maybe just whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. Ladies and gentlemen, Lorne Mattel. What, what haunts you? What haunts me is that line. <laughs> it's a great you know, line. I know it is a great line, isn't it? That is a great well, line. Well, there are no repeats, you know. There are no repeats for you? There are no repeats. No, they, uh, no just, I mean, you can't get away from some things in your life, and that's <laughs> one of them. <laughs> you wouldn't want to get away from that. That's a magnificent moment of sin. It's an yes, iconic and moment. and my life, after all. But when you, what is wonderful about that scene, of course, is that quite obviously the two actors there are in love with each other. You can actually, it's not hindsight, you can see it. There is, an, a, there is a, a, there's a kind of chemistry between the two of you there that's absolutely irresistible. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> it did lead to one or two other things. <laughs> <laughs> and that famous, is it true that, I well, know it's true, but that, that famous look that, that you gave there, that wasn't contrived, was it? That was done out of... Not at all. That was an accident of mine because I was so nervous all through the making of this movie, particularly at the beginning. I was so nervous that my head used to shake. And I was like this, you know. <laughs> and I found that the only way... And it's absolutely true. The only way I could keep my head still was by holding it down and then looking up without moving. Then I, would, I was okay. And it developed into this thing that was named by either Hawks or the... Studio, or I have no idea. I didn't name it, but the, the suddenly look. it was the look. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It defined I'm it. not beefing about it. Listen, not it was sure. good while yeah. it lasted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look a little silly doing it now. <laughs> well, what was interesting, too, was, was the way that, uh, as I was saying earlier when I was talking to, to, to Olivia and to Mira, that, that the men that you married, including Bogey, I mean, insisted that you actually gave up your career. It wasn't a question of insistence. I mean, Bogey said to me, no, well, he didn't tell me to give it up. He said, if you want a career, if you really want to focus on a career, I will do everything I can to help you. But I will not marry you. Because he'd been married to three actresses, three failures, and they'd put their careers first. And I, of course, said, oh, I won't put my career first. He said, I want a wife. He said, I love you, I want to marry you, and, but I want you with me. No location. I promised him that I would never go on location away from him. And I kept that promise. And I'm damn glad that I kept the promise to stay with him. I mean, I wouldn't let him go to Africa without me. I was not about to do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, there were places I wanted to go and things I wanted to see. But he never insisted. I continued to work. But I worked when I was in California. Yes. At home. Yes. Yes. And when he went on location, I almost always went with him. And of course, you want to know either, too, that the, the time that you did spend together was going to be a, a short time, basically. Didn't we? Yes, um, very short, and thank God I made that decision. But it was never insistence, and it was never like uh, turning into the little woman and the thing and the thing and the thing. I, I never... <laughs> I'm too big to be the little woman. <laughs> so I, and with Jason, 
That Jason was my Robots. choice again. Yeah. Um, he didn't insist on anything. <laughs> but uh, I just, uh, except, well, hmm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not in the book. No, not no, in the book. No. But I just decided that um, I had to pay attention. And after all, I had two small children. Why wouldn't I pay attention but, anyway? But you see, he was an alcoholic, and, 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 and Bogey was a difficult man, too. You like these but strong... But Bogey was difficult, but Bogey was never an alcoholic. No, I know that. I, but I, there I is the nobody difference. that is interesting that is not difficult, like you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Uh, I sense it. You sense it. <laughs> and you're quite right. You're yeah. quite right. Your antennae in perfect working order, I have to tell you, Mr. Paul. <laughs> But what's, again, what's interesting in, in, in your book is when you describe Bogie's illness. We were talking to, uh, to the girls about, about the uh, problem with cancer, and he died yes. uh, in denial, in a sense. I mean, he would not... Well, not to himself, I don't think. No, but, but to people around him. I mean, I think the person who is ill makes the decision. If you are ill and you decide that you don't want to discuss it, that you want to continue as though everything's going to be okay, and as far as we were concerned, everything was going to be okay. Then I think you just have to follow along. Yes. I mean, I was not about to sit there and say, well, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to happen? Yes. Never. And uh, you have to respect that choice. Yes. And go along with it. And that's, that's what I did. And, and that's what he did. I mean, he only said, like, uh, I guess, you know, he was kind of a shudder in the last four and a half months of his life. He couldn't go out anywhere or anything. And I, I think about that, the last month, the children used to come in at the end of the day and kind of play in our room and stuff. And, and he said, uh, I'd rather they didn't come in here. He didn't want to be remembered, looking not well and not being able to function well with them. And so, okay. Again, the thing that goes through your book is you say that, that, that the sense of humour that you have has been the most important attribute you've carried with you through your life. If you don't make me laugh, I don't want to know you. <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, I mean, and you would tell it if you would, because it's just a lovely line. The humour you found in, in, in the worst possible moment of your life after Bogie had died were the, were the flowers. Oh, oh, the flowers, yes. I guess, yes, it's very peculiar, this world. No, when, after Bowie died, I had, uh, I mean, a statement was released to, if you care to make any contributions to cancer research, please send it to, you know, found it, cancer research. Don't, you know, I don't know whether I said, don't buy flowers. I don't think or I don't said. Don't send flowers. Or yeah. don't send flowers. Yeah. You just send your contribution to cancer research. Whereupon, I received a telegram from the Floral Association of Southern <laughs> California saying, why did you say, don't send flowers? We're not going to see any of your movies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, it made me laugh because I couldn't believe it. But then again, there are so many things in L.A. that I don't believe. So <laughs> well, let's let's come, come right up to date, because, I mean, in your final chapter, you wrote your autobiography a long time ago, and now you've updated it now. No, you do not update your life. Well, you, all you right, you added an, another chapter then. Yeah, yes, you add to it. The, right. the missing years are added to. I've got a sense there's more to come as well, actually. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you say that, that it, was a, it was an extraordinary time. I mean, it, it was. You, you, you can romance it if you like. But the fact of the matter is, when you start listing the people who were around you, like, you know, Gershwin and Cole Porter, and then the great star Spencer Tracy, and Cary Grant, and Gregory Peck, and all that. And then the writers that you knew, George Axelrod and all those people. I mean, these are huge, huge names in the industry. But more important, of course, in those days, they were protected from the rest of the world, in a sense, weren't they? From nowadays, stars of... Well, more, yes. Well, I think th studios, the studio system the studio, yes. was actually a better system than everyone going off in all directions. Yes. Because the studio, they wanted to control us. And in a way, they did, because they had a big publicity set up and they controlled you through the press. They planned, you know, some of the smarter studio heads planned a career and tried to build a career. Jack Warner was not one of those fellows, by the way. Mm. But uh, it was good. I mean, we were protected. Yeah. We were. They found a way always to get Errol Flynn out of trouble from 
his escapades on a sailboat with a 17-year-old girl. And you know, all that kind of stuff. But the, 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 the difference is nowadays that they're in this, this, under this microscope immediately. I mean, for instance, take an example. Two people that you knew very well indeed, Katie Hepburn and Spencer Tracy. Now, the two biggest stars in the universe had this affair which lasted, what, 20 odd years? More. Well, it wasn't an affair. Well, it, it was much more than an well, affair. Well, but, but, but who, did the rest of us know? No. Well, precisely. Now, can you imagine the fe feeding frenzy that would be now if they were two comparable stars? What happened in the, in the case of Spence and Katie is that they lived their lives very, very privately. It they never went out in public together, never. They went out separately if they went out at all. Katie was never one to go to openings, neither was Spencer, so you never saw her. There was none of this red carpet stuff going on there anyway at that time. And Katie also appeared on the stage. She went to London to be in a play, yeah. so she was gone for several yeah. months, yeah. and then she went to Broadway to be in a play, and then Spence made movies, and he went on location and so forth. So people that knew them well knew about their gigantic love for one another and total dedication to one another. But they never, ever wanted to embarrass his wife, who was less than charming to Katie when Spencer died. So I really think it was their brilliant handling of their own lives. Oh, but, they kept but, it quiet themselves. Now, Lauren, you know that, that there were journalists who knew about it and didn't, didn't print the story. That's the difference. Well, also, they didn't because that it wasn't flaunted. I mean, today, everyone wants to have their picture taken. They want, and then they suddenly get annoyed because it's an invasion of privacy. Excuse me. You're going to go to every opening and be seen everywhere together. Seen, and you're married here, and you're going out with this guy, and the other guy's going out with another girl. But please. Well, of course they write about it. Anything that you do in public is fair game for the press. But what you do in private is not. All right. OK, we're going to talk some more. And, uh, yeah, well, right. should we talk it up? All right, let's talk it up. All right, All right we'll do that in on. just a moment when we take a short break while we make the money to go on doing this show. <laughs> wow. All right. Back in a moment with more from Lauren Bacall, Olivia Newton John, and Mira Sayal. We'll see you then. If your tongue's a yo yo, that's a no no. <laughs> Pick the phone, you fix a monthly bill. So you always know what's coming. You fix from T Mobile. Hey, Herman. What's that? It's a server. A server? An on demand IBM e server. It can monitor itself, manage itself, optimize itself, protect itself, practically heal itself. How to get here? Maybe it ordered itself. <laughs> Self-optimizing IBM E-Server X-Series with Intel Xeon processors. This week inside Scotland on Sunday, a fantastic 30,000 Ryanair flight giveaway. Fly direct from Glasgow Presswick to London, Ireland and Germany. Plus, fly to Dublin from Edinburgh for £1 and from Aberdeen for only 50p. All you pay is the taxes and charges. Claim your no-fare Ryanair flights exclusively with Scotland on Sunday. Some of these plants were potted in Westland multipurpose compost with added John Innes and the rest in leading competitors. Daydream. I fell asleep amid the flowers. Four weeks later, the results speak for themselves. Westland, making British gardens healthier. Clayton is not complex. It's about the deals and why the stage block. You are a thespian tiger. When's my motivation, Artie? To avoiding another season of Panto in real. Now at Arnold Clark, a 41-point service is only £69, and a 41-point service with MOT only £89. It's about the deals. Artie! Get a free sex educational DVD with a Sunday Sport this Sunday. The complete guide to sexual ecstasy absolutely free. 
Warning, couples who watch this explicit DVD together may become highly aroused. So make sure you get your copy of the Sunday Sport this Sunday and get your copy of the complete guide to sexual ecstasy on DVD absolutely free. Get a free salsa lesson or DVD with new fragrance Surf Tropical. So come on girls, salsa your socks off. Sport SPL. All the goals, all the action, all the matches. The best of Scottish football on Scott Sport SPL. Sunday at 10.45. What was that cheesy grin you fed her? She won't believe you then. Hard cheddar. Room. You danced with who? I danced with Dean Kelly once. Well, it wasn't a real dance. It was kind of a presentation of, of all of us here to stay while, I don't know, Harold Allen or one of those fellows was playing the song oh, on the piano Harold in Ira Gershwin's house. Oh, and nice. We did a little <laughs> improvisation. Uh, was Cole Porter there by any chance? No, he wasn't at the Gershwin house. I mean, he had his own group. Uh -huh. Yeah. What a life, eh? Yeah. You danced with Gene Kelly? I did, yeah. Xanadu. Yeah. yeah. Gene Kelly and Travolta, that's not a bad window. Not bad, is it? Is not it? too not bad. bad. No. I've, I've danced uh -huh. with my Uncle Bill Binder. But, <laughs> and is he good? He's brilliant at Bhangra. At uh, Bhangra. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? That's Bhangra. Bhangra? Yeah. I'll give you a lesson. There's so few men know how to dance, you know. Really? Yeah. Oh, do you know how? Oh, I, I know I've got two left feet, but I would have learned for you. I really oh, honey, I it's not to. too late. I know, but we'll, we'll try. <laughs> well, they say you can tell a lot about a man from the way he dances, because if he's good at dancing... Is that true? You mean he's You've just said you've got two left feet, though, haven't you? Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I need to get around to sex eventually. <laughs> Thank God I didn't instigate this one, right? <laughs> Which reminds me, did the casting couch play any part in Hollywood in your days? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting? <laughs> no, no, I'm not for a moment, but as an observer of the oh, scene. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no. But they were, the casting couch, I mean, there were always rumours. Uh, I mean, there were many people who were girlfriends of executives at studios that was not known to the public. And they may have gotten a part or two that they might not have had, mm, had it not yes, been for that. Yes. But I specifically did not know of any. No. You know, you must not guess at those things. You must yeah. not, indeed. You must be sure. It's, uh, absolutely. Otherwise. But what but, uh, but about predatory men? Because in your book, you do tell of, 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 a, um, of a meeting that you had with a uh, film star called Robert Montgomery. Yes, well... I mean... <laughs> Here we're all. What can I tell you? Well, I know. Well, well I, you know, I was invited. I arrived in Hollywood. I was 18 years old. Then, well, I guess it was my, like, I had turned 19 by then or whatever. But I was taken by my agent and his wife to this enormous party that was given by Elsa Maxwell with a hundred people. Every movie star on the face of the earth was there. And I was sitting in a corner in my little dress. They were all in their gowns and nothing. That was glamour time. I was not glamorous. I was in a little kind of gold-colored silk dress that was buttoned all the way up at the top with long sleeves, low-heeled shoes, and I was sitting in a corner. And I'd always had a crush on Robert Montgomery. He was a very handsome man. 
Very attractive. And I loved him in, in movies. I thought he was great in comedies and so forth. And very attractive. And I found that I was introduced to him. And I was so beyond thrilled, but so nervous. And uh, I don't know, either he was walking me out or he said, come out here with me or something like that. But we ended up walking in the same direction at one point. And he said, <clears throat> would you give me your phone number? And I thought, oh, ooh, he wants my phone number. I was so naive. Today would be a different thing. Entirely <laughs> other story. And so I gave him my phone number. And he looked at me and said, too easy. Oh. oh. What a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Put her there. Pal. What a real shit. Eh? What a way to treat her. To treat an innocent young girl That's who just too comes easy. to Hollywood. Just trying to get I'd, 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 Look what happened. <laughs> I'd have taken off to Barnsley immediately. Disillusioned <laughs> <laughs> immediately. Uh, yeah, what a fascinating life you've had. Uh, what a fascinating life of rejection I've had. <laughs> Oh, you're looking wonderful, and it's good to see you again, as always. And the, the book, Lauren McCall, By Myself, and Then Some. Yes, that's... And Then there Some. There you go. Is the extra words that you have penned. Lauren McCall, as ever, thank you very much indeed. Olivia you and John, thank you very much indeed. And Mira Sayal, thank you very much indeed. Very tasty. <laughs> My thanks to Lorne McCall, to Olivia Newton, John, and to Mira Sayal. From all of us here, a very good night. Good night. <laughs>